figured since the only thing that was holding me uh, back from putting on this uh, guard was the fact that I wanted to replace this grommet. It was going to be a lot easier to do it while it was off. So today I, uh, I had already decided I was going to use this cable that I had right here. And uh, I decided today to go pick up a grommet. So I measured the hole here. It's an exactly a half inch diameter hole. So I saw, sourced a grommet out of the kit they had at the hardware store that fits the half inch diameter hole. And then the size of the hole through the grommet's a little bigger than I wanted. I actually was hoping it was going to be actually kind of snug around the uh, outside of the sheathing here. That's not really critical because the main purpose of the grommet is to basically keep this outer sheathing from rubbing on the sharp metal there over time and cutting it. Um, but anyways, I actually took a little piece of tubing I had and found that that almost seems close. So I might actually uh, use that almost like a bushing and beef it up. But I'll cross that in a minute. And the first thing I want to do is clean this better because I had uh, given this a mild cleaning and the outside here is not too bad, but on the inside here, you can see all of this crud right here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this uh, the 3M foaming degreaser on that because it seems to work really well. Hopefully it's not going to affect the paint too badly. Oh yeah, I don't know if you could tell, but that cleaned up a lot nicer. Um, now I just want to have it completely dry and I'm not going to fire up the air compressor because it's kind of late this evening. Um, so I'm just going to put this on top of the boiler overnight and let it dry out. Well, I reached out to the uh, Atlas group on Yahoo and uh, made an inquiry to see if anybody had one of those 916 brackets that they'd be willing to part with. And Not surprisingly enough, uh, nobody uh, responded. As of yet, yeah, it's only been a few days, but I kind of don't think that anybody's going to have one of these laying around. And even if they did have a spare... I wouldn't blame them for not wanting to give it up. And I could wait for one to pop up on eBay, but uh, I'd really like to get this working. So, the general consensus, I got two replies on the board there, on the, on the Yahoo group, and uh, both uh, individuals who replied said basically the same thing. Make your own. So, uh, the ideas that they gave me were pretty, pretty much how I would attack it, with one exception I was thinking of, trying to make this as one piece and without a milling machine that would be pretty tough to do with a bridge port uh, it'd be a real easy thing to make um, but in absence of a bridge port or any milling machine for that matter uh, they said with a good drill press I should be able to fab up something with two pieces so um, let me get something to show you what we're thinking All right, so the uh, general idea is let me get these bolts out of the way is to cut a small piece of plate stock and uh, have that sit behind here and then uh, just drill two holes in this screw it to the bolt it to the uh, side of the bed and then uh, of course this wouldn't be anywhere near this big we could cut out a piece right? and then attached to this plate would be a small block that would have a hole drilled through it that this would ride in. Um, and of course that would have to be quite a bit smaller than it is right now. So that's the general idea. So I'd probably have screws from the back coming from the back side of this into the into the little block. Um, one of the things that I don't like is the fact that this actually has a little machined area that sticks out just a tiny bit proud of the rest of the bed here. So when this is on there, it's going to have the ability to flex back towards the bed a little bit. So again, ideally, if this was a job that I had a milling machine for, I would mill out a little bit of relief on the back of this so it would sit right up against it. But I'm wondering whether or not there's that much, you know, if it flexes back, it's going to move the lead screw back a little bit like that. It's going to be such a small amount there. I'm not sure that's going to make much of a difference. So, 
I'm thinking I might just, uh, well, you know what? I could, I could make my plate, I could grind out a little bit of a relief. Maybe. So I was thinking about how I was going to get this at the perfect position uh, so I could take my measurements so I could make this, this fabricate this part. And then it occurred to me that if I run the carriage all the way down here and engage the half nut, it'll be held in the perfect position. So if I bring this all the way down, move my tailstock back a little bit. So I come all the way almost to the end here. I can even come a little further than that if I wanted to. And if the half not engaged. See that's being held pretty, pretty stiff. So that's going to be the perfect position for that to be held in. Okay, everybody, this is my little quick sketch I made. This is my first uh, con conceptual drawing here of uh, of what I want to do to replace that bracket. So this is the lathe here. And these are the current bolts that I have. So we use a plate that'll come down. It'll have clearance holes, allowing it to be bolted to the side of the bed. I might try and file out a little section off the back here because of that little part that I didn't show on the lathe here that's actually sticking out proud a little bit. I'll worry about that later. Oh, oops. All right, so here's my plan. I'm gonna have this little flat piece come down here going to countersink the uh, screw screw holes from the back side so that the screws will be flush on the back side so when this piece right here is up against the lathe they won't interfere. Um, haven't worked out all the dimensions here yet. Hoping to make this out of one by one um, aluminum stock but uh, might have to make it larger if this hole needs to be out this way further for me to give uh, have more room for the uh, screws to thread into. Um, I could also play with this whole design if I need to, but for right now I'm going to take some measurements. Alright, so last time I worked on this I moved the carriage all the way over and locked the half nut so this is now locked in position so I can take my measurements. The only other thing I did since last time was uh, I uh, put this handle back on. This is the dreaded card window crank handle, but uh, I couldn't find anything else and I'll talk more about that uh, in a bit. So I'm just going to use my uh, calipers and I'm going to put the uh, point, the little tiny circle in the center of this shaft right here. I don't know if you can see it. We'll split that circle and we'll call that the center point. And I'm going to take a measurement right there and I got 980 thousandths. Alright, so, so far I know that the uh, distance from uh, here to the center line of the shaft is going to be 980 thousandths. So the next thing I want to know is I want to know how close this side of the shaft is going to be to this wall right here. So I've got to find out what half of 5 eighths is, the decimal for 5 eighths, and take half of that. I guess I, what I could do is I could go a step further and say well if this is a 5 eighths inch uh, shaft in here then in reality what I want to know is what's the OD of my bushing going to be. Um, maybe, let's just say for sake of argument that it's three quarter inch. So the OD of my bushing is three quarter inch. That makes my math a little easier. Uh, three quarter inch is 750 thousandths. Half of that would be 375 thousandths. So I'm not saying a half inch is 375 thousandths. I'm saying half of this is 375 thousandths. So my dimension from here to here is 
So I know I've got 980 thousandths total to play with. So if I put in 980, I take away the 375 thousandths. That leaves me 605 thousandths. Let's assume that this is quarter inch plate that I'm going to make this part right here out of. So we can take another 250 thousandths away from that, and that leaves me 355 thousandths left from here to here that that screw can penetrate into and thread into. So that's over a quarter of an inch. So this should work, <laughs> which uh, clearly points out that this drawing is not to scale because this, this looks very skinny in here. But in fact, the distance from here to here would actually end up being larger than the distance from here to here. So if I wanted to make this drawing to scale, I'd need to kick this whole thing out over here more. And if I didn't like that idea of doing the screws, what I could do is I could run this plate down a little bit further and do a little uh, like a fillet weld in here and here. Just weld that puppy on there. Well, I can't cut it out of this. This is less than a quarter inch thick, whatever it is. Well, I mean, yeah, I could cut it out of this, but then I've got to uh, just readjust my dimensions there. So I think I'll just let this drawing be conceptual and not worry about the uh, dimensions after all until I f find my uh, <laughs> my donor pieces that'll end up being the uh, stock to make this little project.